we don't advise that you get up immediately. After oh, so you just lay there for a while? For half an hour. Half about an that. hour? Hi, it's Hazel. It's Azura. And I'm Jermaine. And welcome back to another episode of Cleverty's Hash Podcast. Now, girls, I know we've spoken a lot about sex yeah, and talk about intimacy. Sex, but today, we're going to get serious about sex. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, uh, very serious about Okay, sex. today, <laughs> we are going to be talking about baby making and huh? fertility. Oh. So, we have a professional on board. Let's put our hands together for Dr. Jenny. Hello, hi. Welcome. Hi, hi, hi. hi. Oh, she's, she's like in her. St- are these called scrubs? Yes, they are wow. scrubs. <laughs> like Dr. Scrubs. Anybody in this room um, goes into labor right now, just saying. Um, she's <laughs> wearing she's good good hands. Yeah. <laughs> she's wearing good hands. That's right. <laughs> Dr. Janice, please tell our viewers more about yourself. Uh, hi, I'm Dr. Janice Stone. Uh, I'm a consultant ONG. Um, ONG stands for Obstetrician and Gynecologist. Wow. And uh, as well as a fertility specialist with uh, Thompson Fertility Centre. Nice. Okay, so today we have Dr. Janice on board because, um, you know, we have received quite a number of comments or it's a real issue out there that many people are facing fertility issues. You know, mm-hmm. they want to make babies but they realise that no matter how hard they try, mm-hmm. they can't. Mm-hmm. I know of someone who has tried for seven years already still cannot make the second baby happen. Oh, wow. So, it's a real pressure for a lot of couples out there. Mm. Okay, but before that, a quick question for the girls. So, when couples, right, they want to make babies, yeah. they start to calculate when is the yeah. ovulation period, yeah. Yeah. when is the best time for us to have sex, how many times should we have sex a day? Do you think this takes away from the intimacy? Yes. yes. It becomes less romantic. Like, yes. um, like, I think this was probably in like, Oh, I can't remember what show. Maybe Friends, when like Chandler and Monica were trying like, to have Go a baby. Time. Yeah, go yeah. time. And then, like try to have sex as many times as she can while uh, she's ovulating. Yeah. yeah. How is that exciting? Or How is that romantic? Yeah. Right? It becomes like work, you know, like, yeah. oh, we just got to get it done. Mm. Yeah. yeah. But yet many couples do that. Yes, correct. It can be okay the first few times. Yes, but then after that, it's really very stressful. And I think for the ladies, it's actually a bit better because the ladies can separate themselves from the intimacy and the sex you oh, know i mean oh, they are that's surprising yeah, a little bit yeah whereas i mean men they need to they feel need to it. they need to feel it and they need <laughs> so to when they're told to what right actually generally a lot of them land up with a lot of performance anxiety because the lady also gets very stressed if let's say you know in the end he doesn't manage to complete which right. sometimes cannot right yeah right. so so then then they get very stressed because like hey you know we're supposed to get it done and then you spend so long and then it doesn't get done then even worse you see so um yeah it really gets to them so actually in my clinic because time love making unfortunately it is a very real thing you have to you have to catch the window Mm. yeah and then the older you get the the more you have to catch the window because mm. when you're 24, 26, you can pretty much do anything at any time. Oh, we're it older than that much, already. Yeah. Yeah. We've passed yeah. the golden period yeah. oh, no. <laughs> already. <laughs> yeah, because your fertility is naturally higher at that stage. So so you can do whatever you want. You know, 11 out of 12 cycles are probably all right. Wow. Yeah, but then when you're 30-something, uh, half of your cycles are probably a no-go from the beginning. Oh. Yeah. So if you don't have more oh. consistent trying, you will take much longer to get pregnant. So unfortunately, it's a very real thing. You have to do consistent time love making in the window. Okay, yeah. I have too many questions yeah, for Dr. I know, Janice I know. here. <laughs> okay, first of all, I have um, a couple, friend. Um, they're not in Singapore anymore, but um, they have been telling me about how they are timing each and every of their love making. And when it's the when it's my um, girlfriend's ovulation period, they try to have sex like twice or thrice in the day. So, the mm, husband is saying that then my sperm wouldn't be that effective. Oh, yes. is that right? Yeah, that's true. So, oh. actually, the recommended frequency in the window is essentially about five to seven days from your predicted ovulation date. Okay. Yeah, and then you do it every other day. So, oh. it's far better to do it this way than to actually when it's oh you're ovulating you do it two or three times a day so like that the is sperm far can less like effective recharge and build, yes correct there's a refractory period because oh. the sperm moves into a storage space before it's ejaculated so it can't stay in that storage space too long and it cannot stay um i mean it has to you have to give it time to move yeah so then how do you know because you said like some cycles are a no go from the start right, right? Mm. how do you know that it's a no go you can't so oh. you have to have consistent trying because you wouldn't know which month it is so if you try very hard one month yeah. and it's a no go from the beginning you're not going to get pregnant if the next month the egg is good and you don't try so well and there's mm. not enough sperm concentration then 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 you don't get pregnant either so in the end it takes you much longer well I'm exhausted so already yeah, yeah I don't even have a baby yeah, it's so it stressful. is it is so yeah. so um, so we actually have to tell uh, couples practically how to 
how to have, have time <laughs> love making. Oh. Is there a particular position that, that is the best help? for for the baby making for baby swimming. making oh, oh, yeah, 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 okay yeah, baby yes. making yes. Yes. for the sperm to get a gold medal <laughs> <laughs> okay so nothing beats frequency so oh. you have to do so with the recommended frequency aside from that position doesn't really matter except oh, okay. for certain tilts of the womb so when you visit a gynecologist usually um, when they do a scan they check your tilt of the womb yeah so for certain wombs that are tilted backwards for instance mm. so that's called a retroverted womb mm. yeah so in those cases I tell couples maybe you can try doggy style oh, cool. okay. interesting or, yes or if you can't manage it then missionary but then you turn over and lie in the prone or chest position so that oh. the semen pulls in front of the vagina mm. that's where the cervix lies so it will pick up more sperm I hopefully see. Wow. Wow. okay another question I've once heard of this so after the male ejaculates in the female right so if the female just pushes up her hips and like just does this like squiggle squiggle <laughs> the, baby the dance. sperm work will go in a bit more is that um, true? Not really, <laughs> but we don't advise that you get up immediately. After oh, so you just lay there for a while? For half an hour. Half about an hour? hour? Half an hour will do. Some people try to lie the whole day, oh. the whole night. Wait, but, but Dr. Janice, like, if, if I don't pee right after, yes. right, I get UTI. Yeah, so 20, 30 minutes will do, and okay. then you get up and wash. Oh, yeah, that's okay. fine for, for, for do, the do your legs have to be up? Yeah, <laughs> can you just do, put your so, legs up and then yeah. lay like, like, So, uh, no, the, <laughs> there's no evidence to show that putting your legs up is going to make oh. it easier. So, um, actually, uh, I just advise ladies, if you want, you just put a pillow underneath your hips. Oh, there's interesting. No to like okay. put your legs up. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Now, next question. Would the use of lubricants affect the results? Okay, so no. The evidence shows that any type of lubrication would do or no lubrication also. It mm. makes no difference. Uh, you, if you use saliva as lubrication, that's fine, except that it cannot be too excessive. Uh. Oh, yeah. not oh. too much saliva. Not too much saliva. So as long as okay. it's not in excess, it's pretty fine as long as the male has enough, um, I mean like a normal sperm concentration. Right. Yeah, so wow. no no difference. Okay. So once again, every other day to make sure that concentration is good. Mm. Yes, correct. Because mm. of only a fraction of the sperm is going up. Mm. Whether you have a, I mean, when you have a normal sperm concentration, only a fraction of that is going up. Mm. So it's very natural. People will say they are very worried when they stand up and then like there's flow coming mm. out. Mm. Yeah, but that's natural and it's fine. So that's why you lie down for twenty thirty minutes. That's enough for the sperm to coalesce and for the, uh, the sperm that's supposed to get in is already going to get in. Yeah. So, okay, you, so like you said, the frequency is actually very important mm. when it comes mm. to um, you know, baby making, right? So can I assume then that while you're trying for a baby the male should not masturbate. Yes, yeah, so um, in that ovulation window, yeah. uh, we do advise that um, to avoid daily masturbation uh, during that oh, period Oh, during the time. ovulation window? During that oh, okay. period where you're trying. But aside, outside from that, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the important questions. Do yeah. the face again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Now, it's time to get a bit more serious. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Dr. Janice, what are some health concerns that people should get checked before trying for baby. Okay, so definitely for the guy, at least go and uh, get your sperm checked because you can walk around with a low sperm count without knowing. There's no symptoms, really, for, for the guy. So um, for the lady, um, you can visit the gynecologist, just get your all your pap smears uh, up to date, make sure your breast screening and all that is all done. Yeah, okay, these are just the common women health mm. uh, problems. Mm. Then um, the gynecologist will certainly do a scan, make sure your womb ovaries look normal. Um, you can do some blood tests to check mm. uh, for issues or uh, hormonal issues uh, that might be associated with fertility. So um, not just what we call female hormones, but things like thyroid hormone. Oh, yeah, so okay. your thyroid uh, health, your thyroid reserves yeah. is very closely related to fertility. Uh, so it's your iron levels, your vitamin D levels as well. Mm. So usually, right, like in your experience as well, um, because I think most people, or you know, it used to be a taboo thing, but now people are a little bit more open to it. It's more known that, you know, fertility issues is a normal thing. It's very common, actually. Mm, yes. So what are the most, like, common fertility issues that you see? Is it, like, low sperm count or mm. is it, like, you know... In hospitable environment, that yes, they call it, correct. right, in the womb. Yeah, so what um, are the most common ones that you usually see in, okay, like, males and females? the common ones, I wouldn't say most common ones, but the common ones are um, irregular menstruation. Mm. So um, mm. this is usually indicative that they are not ovulating regularly regularly yeah. so can you imagine if you have to try in this window yeah. and then you are not even having a fixed or consistent window then it makes it even more difficult to try oh that was me for like many years right especially when i first got my period because first of all i got it late i think about like 15 16 and then after that for many years at least five years 
um, I probably got it like three, four times a year. That's it. Yes, oh, that's wow. right. Yeah, so so it makes it even more difficult to try. Okay. Yeah. So that's one. And then other things like endometriosis, mm. adenomyosis. These are conditions where the, I mean, um, I mean, just the layman explanation of it is that the uh, menses lining gets deposited outside the womb. Ah. Yeah. So it's not where it's supposed to be. Ah. Causes scarring, inflammation. It makes the whole environment not that conducive for pregnancy. Oh. And then um, for the male, yes, low sperm count. Yeah, actually that one is getting a little bit more common, I would say. Oh, yeah. Yeah, maybe I'm not quite sure whether um, it's due to the environmental exposure to toxins and all these right. things, uh, as well as radiation from the phone. Oh, mm. oh <laughs> no, But one of uh, my, my male friends actually uh, went through IVF mm. and he said that in order to get the sperm out and to, you know, marry mm. it with the egg, a very big needle had to go into his testicles. Okay, so the thing is, um, for him, his sperm count is so low or almost zero that it's not possible to get the sperm from the ejaculate. Yeah. Like from so, masturbating. So yes, correct. So, so no choice. We have to try to get the sperm directly from the testis itself. Do oh. the men scream when you do that? I generally do mine under anesthesia. Oh, so, <laughs> so that they will not scream. <laughs> yeah, Thomas is really glad right now. I had a sigh of relief. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but overseas is very commonly done in the clinic. Mm. Yes. I can't imagine that, really. But I know that age matters as well, right? Yes. For both mm. men and women. So, Dr. Janice, you mentioned just now that 24, 26... The golden period for women? 26 to 28 for the women. Okay, oh, yes. we're done for. Yeah, so pretty one much. Year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much after 30, it goes downhill. So it's more so for the lady than the guy. Mm. The guy may be 40. Oh. After 40, the, usually we don't expect their sperm count to drop, mm. but the sperm quality will certainly be different. Mm. Ah, so by how many percent do you think it goes down? For example, for women, twenty six mm. to twenty eight, and then like uh, 30. after thirty. Yeah. Okay, so let's just take um the chances of conception within one cycle. Okay, natural conception meaning natural chance of pregnancy. Um, when you're twenty six to twenty eight, it's about twenty five percent, maybe one in four chance. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But well, when you reach still quite low, isn't it? Mm, okay. Yes. Well, human fertility is very inefficient yeah. <laughs> oh. when you reach 35 that goes down to 15 percent oh, wow. and then after oh. that it's yeah mm. if you're above 40 your chances are probably less than five percent oh so age gosh. is a big concern i mean yes. even mm. we've covered like egg freezing and all that yeah. but it doesn't turn back time egg mm. freezing doesn't turn back time yeah. yeah at the age that you you know con want to conceive that is the age where you know i guess whether you're able to house the yeah. the fetus and all that but i think also um, not just age, but the health of the per of the people right. of both mm. parties. So, are there any things that we can do to try to make sure we're more fertile? I don't know, like drinking yeah. less, for example. Does it help? Um, certain lifestyle measurements uh, measures. I mean, surely, um, definitely weight management. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, not just ladies who are too uh, obese, but ladies who are very thin as mm. well. Oh. Yes. So, um, if your body mass index are on the extremes, it's going to take you longer to get okay. pregnant. So, that's one. Um, of course, I mean, you don't have to avoid alcohol entirely, but you shouldn't be an alcoholic either. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's just smoking. in general, you shouldn't be an alcoholic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's true. <laughs> Um, smoking is very, very bad, particularly okay. for the lady, even more mm. so for the lady than the guy. Yeah, um, yeah because it damages their tubes. Oh. Yeah, so it's... Uh, uh, over, sorry, fallopian... Fallopian tubes. Okay. Mm, yeah, so it's really, really bad. Mm, yeah, so a woman should really never, ever smoke. What yeah. about caffeine? Uh, yes, mm. and caffeine, um, excessive caffeine has been shown in studies for some reason to cause couples to take longer to get pregnant on both sides. So, um, we do advise uh, both men and women to not have excessive co caffeine consumption. So, usually we limit it to about one cup a day. Oh, mm. wow. What That's about okay. the food that you consume? Are there like, you know, specific foods that are, you know, better, let's say protein? I don't know. Uh, a fertility diet is essentially a health diet. Oh. Just a very oh. health diet. There's really no, no particular, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you're talking about love making, you want to go and take all the effort and sex. Oh, or like oysters, oysters. oysters and all these things. That's a different thing. What, does oysters yeah. boost like your sperm? No, no. Oh, okay. no. Oh, the olives? Oh, okay. I guess no, not. La, yeah. Yes, that's right. I mean, nothing nothing concrete la, has been shown. Actually, okay. one of my friends who, you know, she has two kids now, she actually told me the health of the baby is dependent on the health of both parents at the point of conceiving. Is that mm. true? In a way, yes, definitely. Oh. So, 
of um okay let's just take the most common thing obesity mm. yeah if the, um if you're obese and then if you manage to get pregnant your pregnancy overall will face a greater risk of miscarriage greater oh. risk of birth defects greater risk of undetected birth defects because your scanning is going to take uh is going to be more problematic right. as well yes and then in general uh risk of diabetes all the metabolic conditions on oh, yeah. all that will be yes mm. because Does that pass on to the baby yes that's right so yeah the baby is i mean there's this thing called metabolic conditioning yeah mm. while the baby is inside yeah so all this definitely does matter mm. okay oh, wow so in this day and age and um the patients that you're exposed to do women still get blamed for fertility issues more than men? Oh, very much less so already. Right. Yes, yeah. Last time it used to be a huge issue, right? Yeah, correct. So mm. men do not come forward. So that's why I was just mentioning, um, don't know whether it's because of the environmental exposure or it's just the fact that men are more, more like, open. Yeah, now. more open now and they just keep mm. coming forward to to check mm. with along with the lady. Yeah, whereas in the past maybe the lady would come and check themselves first and then the guy never just get yeah, just doesn't get checked. Because you always mm. see in those like dramas and stuff, right? right? Mm. Where the like mother in law Oh my will, gosh, yeah. Or yes. blame like the, the daughter in law. The daughter in law. Like, yes, you're, yes. You're not, the reason it's why not I can't like that anymore. It. Yeah, it's not, right? Maybe yeah. technological advancements, because last time they didn't know. Yes, they didn't know whose right. fault it was. Naturally, they blamed the woman. Yes. But now, like, if it's the guy's fault, we know, we can see. You got a right. low sperm count. Yes. Yeah. And even gender, X or Y, it comes from the guy doesn't come from the girl. Yeah. Girl's always an ex. It's a default. <laughs> That's right. So, question, right? When you talk about like sperm quality, mm. can you sort of like know? whether it's good quality as in like does the quality have to do with like the genes that it carries yes in a way oh, so like oh. um there's a reason why smoking and all these things may be bad for the guy because um it, do, it does cause oxidative damage to the sperm okay so um you know higher risk of genetic defects and all that in the sperm but the true actual sperm quality cannot be measured same with true egg quality right. it cannot really we don't have a tool for measuring that mm. yeah so um we use age for the lady as a presumed um quality indicator oh. so the older you are the the more we presume that your equality is worse mm. okay i've once heard someone say something like this if as ridiculous as it sounds right i'm gonna it's tell like myth you busting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this uh, this man um he's a father of two kids he once told me that you know if you have sex a certain way you will have a daughter and if you have sex another way like say a different position you will have a son so he has two kids and he actually tried the different ways <laughs> so and? true enough that time he did this position, he got a daughter. What position? Then he changed it, he got a son. Um, I can't remember okay, that off okay, the top okay, of my head, okay. but that was what he said. I'm Is sure the doctor true? has heard that before. No, so yeah, it's, it's <laughs> not true because there are actually two different schools of thought. Okay. So okay. if there are two very different schools of thought, you can tell, you know that it is it's definitely... Um, if some people try this and it works for them, they're going to say it works, yeah, you know? And yeah. then some people try that way and say it works. And they are opposites. Oh, so, so oh, yeah. It's luck, la, basically. Yeah, yeah, correct. So you, you're going to get, it doesn't work. I mean, so I got one boy, one girl, but yeah. it doesn't, it, I right. did nothing to do right. that. <laughs> so there's no way at all we can yes. try to aim for a boy or girl. Yeah, and actually, I mean, the thing is, couples who come to see me, generally, they are already having difficulty having a child altogether. So, so they don't mind any gender? Oh. Uh, in a way, yes, they don't mind any gender, but um, we have to ask them to do more frequent lovemaking. Oh. And in some cases, if you want to try for a boy and girl, they're asking you to do a specific time and a specific mm. set of lovemaking. So it reduces their chances of conceiving altogether. Right. Yeah, yeah, which is not a good idea. Because yeah, <laughs> I watched in How I Met Your Mother, they mm -hmm. said like, oh, if you want to have a boy or something, then yes. it has to be really hot. Then like she used what? the hair dryer or something. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, 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 I tell you lots of things. Yeah. Someone, someone once said, oh, so you have to drink like this entire stomach intestine soup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and eat the stomach as well, the pig stomach. I'm like, Oh my goodness. Actually, I've heard this about diet. So apparently I heard, right, mm. that if you, if the father eats a lot of meat, protein, yes. mm. and then you're more likely to get a boy. <laughs> but if they have a very sweet diet, very oh. sugary Chocolate stuff, dessert, yeah. and then you'll have a girl. Yeah. A lot of it is based on the theory that the Y sperm is slightly weaker than the, <laughs> than the X sperm. Okay. Yes. Oh. So a lot of these things about doing closer to the ovulation window, the, yeah, and things like that. Okay. But, um, I don't go with either one. If not, I'll be okay. wrong 50% of the time and then my patients will be very angry <laughs> with <true>. me. <laughs> but talking about the sex of the baby, if we can, because you're also an IVF um, specialist, mm. um, if we can zero in on IVF, right? I mean, like, everyone says Beyonce 
you know, <laughs> when she did her IVF for her twins, she actually engineered the sex of the baby. Okay, overseas it can be done, but oh, in oh. Singapore you can't. Oh really? Yeah, because when you do IVF, it's a combination of the sperm and the egg already. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you get embryos. So these embryos, they have a, I mean, they have a gender. So because you also yeah, it's already Beyonce, combined. So Beyonce chose which embryos? Yes, correct. Yeah, oh, so you okay. can. Yeah, if but you, you can't have do both, it here. you can't do it in Singapore. Yeah, it's not, yeah. Oh, it's not permitted. Yeah, it's not. It's just not permitted. Oh. So screening of the embryos is not permitted at all. Oh. Yeah, so we wouldn't know. Okay. So oh. it's really by luck and by chance. So yes. do you think she engineered twins? It's not that, but twins are more common with IVF mm. because okay. of the number of uh, embryos we put inside the womb. Yeah. Mm. So we usually put, um, I mean, we can put two embryos within and it, we do so to maximise the chances yeah. of success with that transfer. Yeah. A lot of the times we get single pregnancies from that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, because we're putting in two, of course, the possibility of twins increases. Right. So that's oh. why you see more So usually, twins. how many do you transfer? I've heard like between three to five, I think. No, no, no. 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 Oh, oh no. Maximum two? <laughs> no. Yes, maximum, maximum two. two. Oh. Um, if you fulfil a certain criteria and you're above a certain age, yeah. then um, they will allow three. But oh. Phoebe from Friends had triplets. Oh. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> and um, aside from IVF, there are other fertility treatments. Mm, so okay. things like ovulation induction, oh. um, artificial insemination, intrauterine insemination. Yeah. So all these also uh, increase the poli uh, possibility of twins or triplets. Interesting. Yeah, in fact, oh. quadruplets even because wow. yes, correct because um, especially when you do um the supra ovulation intrauterine insemination S O I U I, basically you are giving medications to cause three or four eggs out, and then you're just going to shoot sperm in. Mm, mm, so mm. how many of that fertilizers and how many uh, pregnancies you get from that is a bit out of your control. It's statistics, whereas, right? Yeah, yeah. Correct. whereas for IVF, if you're putting in a maximum of two in general, okay, sometimes you get three from that, but uh, yes, mostly oh. you'll get yeah ones so, and then some twos. Since we're on twins and like triplets, right? <laughs> so if my dad is an identical twin, does that mean that there's a higher probability that I will have twins? Not really. Oh. It is more so... <laughs> 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 No, he's, her dad really is an yeah. identical yeah. twin. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, no, no, I'm a but twin it, myself. Oh! oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> identical or fraternal? No, no, no. Uh, mine is fraternal oh, twin. Wow. So mine will have a higher possibility because um, it is two eggs from my mom. Sorry, I don't understand. So the, the hereditary patterns is is more so from the mother's side. Oh. Yeah, and if, yes, oh, if the mother okay, can, okay, yes, understand. yeah, because uh, her hormonal system is such that, you know, she can get... Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, okay. So it's, so it's because it's her dad that's the one who's yeah. identical to. Yes, correct. And um, that results from a splitting of the embryo. Right. That one is a consistent rate across the population. That's so. like by chance. Yes, that's okay. right. Interesting. Mm. Oh. Huh. Yeah, but in general, natural chances of twins is... Rare, it's not, not common. Yeah. But they're so cute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they wear the same clothes. Most twins you see are, are from IVF. Ah, I see, I see. Interesting. Okay. okay, now I have more fertility myths here. Let's oh. debunk them all. <laughs> all okay. right. Come. Myth number one I'm unlikely to face fertility health issues as I am generally healthy. Definitely wrong. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, yeah, correct. So, uh, whether you can conceive or not easily has nothing to do with your overall health. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, myth number two, I can still get pregnant easily through ART, Assisted Reproduction Technology Treatments, when I get older. No. Um, so unfortunately, ART treatments are very much limited by, yes, the lady's uh, own egg reserve and egg quality, which declines with time and age. Oh. So therefore, um, it is, I mean, actually not that easy when you get mm. older with mm. IVF. But even then, it's still better to attempt the IVF at that age because... You can only get older, you cannot get younger. Mm. What if yeah. with these, this ART, right, you had already frozen eggs? So you yes. have young eggs. Correct. So that is why egg freezing helps. Oh. Yes. Ladies to sort of like um, not be so pressurised by mm. time yeah. Yeah, to start the family now. Yeah. yeah, It is unable to definitely guarantee you a baby, mm. but it's able to at least put you back in that same position you oh. were a few years ago. Right. Yeah, okay. the same chances as that time. Right. So that right. is very important. Mm. Mm. Okay, last myth. There is limited financial support for fertility-related treatments. Uh, not so, uh, because in Singapore, there is a government subsidy available in the public institution IVF centres. Mm. Oh. So um, that really makes IVF a lot more affordable. Mm, for the oh. general uh, public, yes. I see. So, is it safe to say that as long as the woman still has the uterus, she can get pregnant? Yes, because um, even if she has no eggs, um, there are options of donor eggs oh. as well. Oh. Yes. Mm. And that's legal in Singapore? Uh, yes, it's legal in Singapore. Mm. Oh, 
Ooh. but surrogacy is not. Surrogacy is not legal in okay. Singapore. Mm. Okay. We mm. we seek overseas options uh, okay. for that. Yes. So now that we have talked about you know IVF and fertility and all that, um, and like you said, there are there's support right for people who uh, want to look more into their fertility. And you actually work with a uh, social service agency called uh, I Love Children. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Um, Thompson Fertility Center works yeah. with them. <laughs> so yes, um, I'm the fertility specialist from Thompson Fertility Center. So I help out with. That. Yes. Okay, so apparently they are sponsoring fertility consultations. So the campaign has been going on for a while. And it's a really good campaign. Um, so they have this um, um, fertility health consultations for the general public. Basically, they come forward to get just a basic fertility health check. So oh. um, that really helps because anyone can get a fertility health check, whether mm. they are, you know, just just before getting married mm. or after just getting after getting married, just to just to know whether mm. they are going to have problems. Yeah, I see. Yeah. You may not be able to tell whether you're definitely going to be, you know, easy mm. to conceive, mm. but you can at least, you know, find some problems um, which might be amenable to early detection and treatment, oh. which might make your fertility chances in future um, better. So do people have to go as a couple or do they usually go? Usually in? couples. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. because I mean the partner, the male partner definitely plays a role. Okay. Yes. I see. Okay. So they g both get checked together in a sense. Yes, that's right. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So if you want to sign up for a fertility consultation um, with I Love Children, you can actually go to the link in the description box and sign ups end on 10th of April this year. So that's very soon. Mm. And we also know that, you know, fertility treatments, they can cause a lot of anxiety, mm. uh, pressure, discomfort and pain. Have you met like couples who tend to shy away from admitting that they need to undergo these treatments? Definitely. It's not so much that they're in denial about the thing. It's just that it's very stressful. Mm. So actually, I always try to tell couples that they kind of have to keep the relationship going. Yeah, because in the end, right, it's very sad if you spend a lot of effort mm. and, and uh, time invested in this whole process. I mean, we have had couples who conceive finally via IVF and then they're in the midst of a divorce within mm. a year after that, which is really very sad. Yes, so the whole thing puts a very um, bad strain on a relationship. Mm. Yeah, so it's like a crisis the relationship is facing. So mm. uh, it's very important to to keep up the relationship in other ways, I mean, aside from this whole issue, mm. yeah. Actually, I've seen like a couple of friends go through IVF and you know, I've seen like how they've got to jab themselves, you know, it messes Why? up their hormones. Mm. And after a failed cycle, how long do you have to wait before you can start on a new cycle? Uh, you don't actually have to wait very oh. long. Yes, okay. that's right. Just within one or two cycles, we will ask them mm. to, to continue with the transfer cycles if they have remaining fro uh, frozen embryos left right. or mm. if they don't have to try and persist in collecting uh, new embryos. Right. Yeah, some measure of perseverance is needed. Yeah, mm, for yes. sure. So I have a friend who is like that as well. Mm. So she makes her husband do the jabs for her. Mm. Oh, so okay. that the husband can feel like right. sort of the pain that she's going through. Mm. Yeah. Even though it hurts her a bit more because of it's course you will know your own her. angles. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. better, how to make yourself feel a bit more comfortable. But mm. if you have your husband do it for you, sometimes the angles are not correct and she actually hurts more. But she would still prefer that than having to jet yeah. herself. It's uh, different for everybody. Right. Um, it's some people just, uh, not just because of that reason, but because um, they just can't bear to do it themselves. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah. So, True. so, yeah, it's be uh, they just feel it's better that someone else does it. Yes. Mm. Mm. I can't imagine. So, I mean, it's, it does sound like fertility in itself. While, you know, like the birth of life and all that is such a wonderful thing. But there are a lot of considerations that go into it. Um, and it can put a lot of strain, I think, mentally as well. Especially mm -hmm. if you're not successful. You could feel like, oh, you know, what's wrong with me? But why me? And yeah. things like that. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Which brings me to my next point. Is mental health more important than trying to conceive a baby? Mm. <laughs> Definitely. Wow. You guys think so? Yeah, yeah some people, no, but some people think that having the baby would solve all the problems. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But um, I don't think that um, that is, yeah, that if you think like that, it's really going to be very difficult. Right, but we also understand that, you know, at that point, both sides are so stressed about mm. wanting to have a baby yeah. so much that they just cannot control their emotions. Mm, yeah. I'm sure you've met so many patients like this. Yes. How would you advise them then? So we tried uh, our best to counsel them in clinic, but obviously there are time limitations. Yeah. Um, I spend more time with uh, couples who have failed 
cycles rather than um, the ones that have um, succeeded. Mm. Yes. If really more professional help is needed, then we have um, psychological wellness services oh, wow, and okay. psychiatrists to step in and help. Mm. Yes. But essentially, it's a very personal thing between the two. Um, yeah, so that's why I feel that generally couples who communicate better with each other who mm. keep up a very open communication, especially from the guy, because it's always the guy who's a little bit less forthcoming yeah. when it comes to this. Uh, it helps. Mm. I actually know someone who did a couple of cycles and I think um, they were unsuccessful in all of it. So it was, you know, taking a toll on her, especially uh, mentally, physically also as, as well. Because I think, you know, it does certain things to your body, right? And um, I think some sort of like strain their relationship as well. So, you know, for the sake of their sanity and their relationship, they said, you know what, we're going to stop. Yeah, like, take a break. Stop trying for a baby. Yeah, like we're going to stop the IVF cycles. Like, it's okay. Mm. Yeah. Oh. Mm. Mm. Like not take a pause, but stop entirely. Yeah, because okay. I think they did a couple of times, they mm. paused and then they start again. Mm. Yeah. Mm, yes, nothing wrong with that. You just need to understand how the IVF helps and mm. how the treatment helps and how it works. I think mm. understanding how it works scientifically, right, really does help you to logically work out how many cycles you're going to do, mm. when you're going to put a stop to certain things, yeah, and the time frames and all these things, mm. uh, yeah, that you're looking at. Then you're not so stressed by the whole Right. process itself as well. Yes. Sounds like a lot of yeah. understanding is needed. Yeah, a lot so, of communication. So, not just mm. between the partner but with the doctor as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's right. So, um, I try my best to yeah. really explain the whole process of the IVF and everything to them. Do you feel like a psychologist sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> Teaching people how to have sex as well. <laughs> Well, I feel yeah. like I've learned so much from this episode. Yeah. I'm not looking to become a mother myself anytime soon, but you know, I feel like so much more well prepared with this knowledge that I have learned from Dr. Janice today. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just have a final, actually, a final question, if you okay. guys don't mind, because of course, for us, right, when we talk about sex in the past, we've always talked about safe sex, contraception, yeah. don't have a baby. Then today, it's like flip. It's like have a baby. <laughs> so when you've been on contraception for many years, mm. does that affect your fertility? Good question. Um, it. If let's say you're talking about birth control pills, sure. um, it does to a certain extent because the act of postponing um, trying to conceive, mm. that duration is already your fertility will decline mm. with time and age. Aww. Once you stop the pills, your fertility is restored, but restored to that point, time point, right. not to the back right. yeah, before you started the, the pills. Mm. Yeah, so people have the misconception or misunderstanding that it did affect their fertility, but it's not true. It's actually just a time factor. Then after you stop the pills, it takes about two or three cycles before you actually get back your mm. ovulation. And then the lining does thin out while you're on the birth control pill. So it takes oh. a while also for that to build that up again. Mm. Yes. So, But it is not known to really affect fertility aside from this. Yes. So um, other kind of methods where you do the injections oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and depo oh, no, the, yeah, the depots or the... Yeah. yeah. So these things take a longer time to wash out from the body. So oh. especially the injections, it can take up to a year for you wow. to get back your oh. ovulation. So in this... And then time is lost again in that right. in those instances. So yes, in a way, it does um, have that small that impact. But not in the way where in it itself. affects. Yeah, yeah correct. Okay. Right. Not interesting. Itself. Yeah. So it seems like the biggest enemy against fertility is it's time. time. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, right. that is right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're losing precious minutes as we talk. So yes. make a baby to me. <laughs> okay, Just I'm kidding. ready. If you want to. <laughs> Yeah, if you want to. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Janice, for sharing so much with us today. Any final words for our listeners here at Hush? I think one take-home message is if you have plans to start or to postpone plans for a family, then yes, go and get a fertility health consultation Yeah, so that you can better understand your uh, current fertility health, how it relates to time and uh, what to do. You can also get basic advice about the frequency of lovemaking and all mm. that so that you are not... Um, wasting time just mm. trying to dabble around or yeah um, wasting time yeah. having sex <laughs> yeah, yeah dabble around yeah wasting time having sex I know I've got couples walking out of the clinic oh my goodness we would not know this if we didn't come here to oh. yeah so so yeah because you, you get a lot of information from the internet as well but mm. you know it can be quite disparate and um, sometimes inaccurate mm. yeah and unreliable mm. so yes um, so yeah it would be good to visit a specialist just to get the basic information 
Alright, thank you Dr. Janice. So to all viewers, if you have any questions, feel free to drop us a DM on Instagram at itsclarity.co. Yes, looking forward to the increase in birth rates. Um, you can listen to us <laughs> on we so. listen Spotify, Apple Podcasts and don't forget to turn on the notification. Yes, you're welcome to the Singapore government. <laughs> and if you check us out on YouTube, um, we're actually wearing orange today because Oops. I googled and apparently it's the colour symbolising fertility. <laughs> Yay! That's what they say. Yay! Yay! I hope we're all... Uh, Fatal. Fatal. <laughs> yeah. Alright, thank you so much. I'm Hazel. I'm Azura. I'm Jermaine. And we'll catch you next time. Thank Bye. you, Dr. Jenny. Thank you, Dr. Jenny. Thank, thank you. Now, any other burning questions before I move on? Burning questions, uh, what happens if I have a burning sensation? Right? I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> I think we'll ask along joke. the way. Yeah, that's a joke. That's a joke, yeah.